Welcome to another video. I hope you all are doing well and I'm having a good week and enjoying all the election news. But we're not here to talk about that today. We are here to talk about an interesting topic. How did the Titanic's lights stay on for as long as they did? Because in all the, you know, all the conversations, survivor testimony, and everything that you see about the sinking, the power stayed on till honestly the very 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 last minute even after the breakup there's been some reports that some lights came on so we're going to look at that question today discuss it and see if we can unravel the mystery a little bit into the mysterious circumstances of how titanic kept power for as long as it did this is the sinking animation from titanic honor and glory and this is generally what is accepted within the titanic community if you look at survivor testimony and just everything that in evidence you can everybody says that the ship's power stayed on right up to the end as you can see here in this amazing animation so how is this possible how is it possible that the ship kept power even though she has minutes to live the first thing you need to understand about this process is the design of ships from that era as you can see from this blueprint, Titanic's whole bottom area mostly made up of the engine rooms. The first four compartments are cargo holds and stuff like that. But from the rest of the ship, from the first funnel back, it was one big engine room. You got the boilers in the front and then the main engines and generator in the back of the ship. Now, the one other thing that you need to understand about steamships is you know how steam works. You know, it's you're boiling water, it's creating heat and using the pressure to you know, push a ship forward or run a turbine or something like that. And you couldn't just get rid of the steam. So right after the iceberg impact, the um, the affected areas that were being flooded real quick, like boiler room six and five, not right away, but it, they had to take care of it, was the first thing they had to do was vent the steam out of those adjacent boiler rooms that were flooding. And when they did that, they essentially kept the boilers, when you have a really, really hot boiler and you have freezing seawater, you could create a thermal explosion, which, you know, ships at the time were known to just explode when they were taking on water in this kind of situation. So in Titanic's case, you've got, she had 26 boilers, you've got 26 bombs that could just explode. So. Any of the boiler rooms that were beginning to flood, they had to vent out all of that steam pressure. And they also had another problem was they were making steam at the concept that the Titanic was also running at full speed ahead. And when they stopped, they were building up pressure. So all that excess steam, you've got freezing water coming in and you've got steam pressure building up. You've got to put out those fires and you've got to vent that excess steam before your ship just explodes. This is the 1995 sinking animation and it shows the interior of the ship as the flooding initially began and during these moments they had to vent the steam out of the boiler rooms that were the most at risk for flooding so that they wouldn't explode and then they had to rely on the steam from the remaining boiler rooms to power the ship. The two men you see here, this man's name is Jack Phillips. And this man right here, his name is Harold Bribe. And both of them gave us some really, really interesting information into how the ship was handling power during the sinking. Jack Phillips and Harold Bribe were the Titanic's wireless operators. And that, that was the Morse code machine that they used to call for help during the sinking. And most people, when they observe the sinking, they see the Titanic going down and they notice the lights starting to glow a slightly you know, darker red as the ship was losing power. But for Jack Phillips and Harold Bribe, they knew about the ship's power situation more than anyone. You see, the way that the wireless transmitter on the Titanic worked is the more power you have, the farther your signal can go. So as the sinking progressed, while Jack Phillips and Harold Bribe were sending Morse code messages, they're like, okay, now we can't talk to America. Okay, now the Olympic, the ship that was 500 miles away is now out of range. Uh, the Carpathia, it's 50 miles away, it's now out of range. So as the Titanic's power decreased over time, the range of the wireless got lower and lower and lower and kind of closed in on the ship. So for the people on board, the power went out in a moment. But for the wireless operators, Titanic losing power was a very slow and gradual process. Now, when it comes to Titanic's boiler rooms, boiler room six, got hit pretty bad by the iceberg, so it ripped open pretty quick and flooded pretty quick. Boiler Room 5 only had that very, very small tear, 
and it flooded fairly slowly. They didn't have to abandon it until pretty late into the sinking. Boiler room four didn't start flooding until around 2 a.m., which is 20 minutes before the end. So when it came to steam and the boilers that they had running, they didn't have, the boiler rooms didn't flood very quickly because they were further back at the ship. So that explains where the source of steam for the fuel is. Even though they vented out a huge amount of the steam while the ship was still running, they were able to keep certain boilers lit enough to keep the ship's essential systems working, like for the telegraph. And then as areas started to flood, they would just move further back. Boiler room one was actually never lit throughout the sinking. So they only had boiler room six through two supplying, you know, supplying steam and stuff like that throughout the course of the voyage. We're taking another look at the 1995 sinking animation because it actually showcases how the compartments flooded. And just pay attention, each compartment, think of that as the boiler room, and you can see how far down the ship is before the next boiler room starts to flood. So that's a good example of how, you know, the boilers and everything were able to stay functioning throughout the course of the sinking and the ship to keep power. And we also can't forget about the engineers and the men who stayed behind. Sure, you know, a lot of the crew and the engineering staff were released, but there were a handful of men who volunteered to stay behind and, you know, keep shoveling coal and keep working. And they knew that staying behind meant that they were probably not gonna get out. Um, Archie Frost, he was an engineer and he was in the engine room that night. And at some point in the sinking, Thomas Andrews did come down and say, the ship does not have much time to live. And if you stay here, you will die. And Archie Frost said, we will stay here as long as we need to be here. Those men were heroes. They were the everyday heroes that kept the power going, kept the lights on. There were a lot of heroes on the Titanic that night. The clip you are seeing right here is from a documentary film called Saving the Titanic, and it's all about the engineering crew. And you can see the lights starting to fail as the ship is losing power and sinking, and, you know, anticipating the power is about to go out. And then you see this man down in the engine room of the Titanic fighting and, you know, working the engines and doing everything he can to keep the power going. And even right there at the end, they were able to keep the ship in power just for a little bit longer so people could see and try to save themselves. All right, guys. Well, hey, I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you so much for watching. I hope you found it, you know, informative and insightful and in how the lights on the Titanic and the power stayed running till right up to the end. Anyway, guys, I hope you're having a good day and let's enjoy the rest of this week and you all have a good day.